This week, I made two videos because there was a point that I was making in the video before this one, and I did not want that point to get lost or overshadowed by these other points. Understand the world is ripe for change. Things are happening right before our eyes. They are moving with many different distractions. If you ever need proof of that, just look at what they're doing with Donald Trump. They are literally talking about more distraction with bringing about another indictment. Tonight, new charges filed against former President Trump in the case surrounding his handling of classified documents, accusing him of asking an employee to delete security camera footage at his Florida estate, allegedly to obstruct the federal investigation into sensitive national security documents brought to Mar-a-Lago. The updated federal indictment also adding an additional defendant, Carlos de Oliveira, described as a maintenance worker at Mar-a-Lago. It comes on the same day that three sources tell NBC News the special counsel's office told former President Trump's attorneys to expect an indictment in the case centering on the deadly January 6 Capitol attack and efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That would be the third and in many ways the most serious case against the former president. We have the script that they're using to get our attention around LeBron James' son. In Israel, there are talks about a civil war set to happen, which makes sense, being that they're waiting for the Messiah, so chaos in that land should be expected. There are so many different things happening right before our eyes, and we cannot be distracted. Um, I'm glad you're there for reporting purposes. Uh, we can't wait to have you home, and I know you can't wait to get home. What's the situation? What's the latest that you're able to ascertain on the ground? So it's really hard to tell. I mean, everything from who's actually in charge here. We saw this video last night that you mentioned that included a bunch of different military leaders here. And it was a cross section of people from the National Guard, the Army, even the Special Operations Forces, and even someone from the Presidential Guard, who are the initial group who took the president into custody or detention yesterday at the presidential palace. But it's still not clear who's actually in charge here. And I will say, uh, the curfew has just gone into effect here. It does seem to tonight that it's uh, that more people are abiding by it mm. than what we saw even just last night. That's what this group announced, a curfew nationwide, a nationwide uh, ground stop of all air traffic, civilian and military aircraft, that's all aircraft, and they closed the borders for at least a week or so, but it's not really clear if that even could be extended. So um, what we today here in the Capitol, what we know is that Unlike the protests yesterday, which were really focused around the presidential palace area and seemed to be people who were protesting the president's detention, today it's the, the protests much were, first of all, were much bigger. They were around the National Assembly, which is not too far from there, but not in the direct area of the, the palace area. And they seemed to be in protesting against the democratically elected president mm. and in favor of this ruling military group. Um, and it was, it, they were a lot more fired up. They set a lot of cars on fire. There was smoke in the air here today for some time. Um, and they, many of them were unfurling Russian flags. It's not really clear why mm. that is. We've spoken with officials here for several days now. There's no indication that Wagner is behind this at this point. Um, but, you know, we also know that uh, Vladimir Putin held this Russia-Africa summit today and one of the things they talked about was whether Russia would be able to somehow help to restore calm here. I will say, you know, the streets here right now have, have quieted down probably because of the curfew, um, but there's no sense of, of any kind of, of real yeah. uprising except for over where the protests have been. Um, Courtney, do you have a sense of our military presence? Does it disappear if it appears President Bazoum is not going to retain power? So this is the big question. If we start hearing the U.S. talk about this as a coup or a military coup, that triggers this U.S. law that will immediately force them to stop providing a, most of the aid. Now, a lot of that will include the U.S. military training mission. I mean, that's why we're here, Chuck. We came right. to, to see how the U.S. military is working with the Nigerian military to fight these, this growing presence of terror networks, not just in Niger here, but sort of in, in this whole West Africa, including coastal West Africa area. And you mentioned Niger is a linchpin. The reason for that is a lot of these, these the two main groups, are they really converge on this area here. It's an ISIS affiliate, an Al-Qaeda affiliate. They're converging on this area. The Nigerian military has been a, a good partner to the U.S. Mm. in trying to combat that terror network. The concern here is if this is a military coup, if, there's, if the president, democratically elected president, is actually ousted, 
a lot of that aid and a lot of this military presence here is going to is going to end by law. But we also need to look at everything with a biblical mindset. And so I want to speak to what is happening right now in the world while also making sure it is understood how to look at these things through a biblical mindset. If you do not watch video one that explains the script that they're running, please make sure to watch that next. It's important that we all stay focused and we all stay ready. Let's begin. Okay, so in that last video, we spoke about politics and the financial system. But there are other things that are happening right before our eyes as well that we cannot afford to ignore. First thing I want to talk about, please do not ignore what is going on with the weather. As I have explained before in my video about climate change, the events that are prophesied to happen in the book of Revelation will be communicated to the masses as results from climate change, not from judgment of Yah. People aren't going to say this is happening because the Most High is angry with the world. That's not what people are going to be saying. They're going to be talking about climate change. And you can see today that people are fully on board with believing it. All these events that deal with the weather will all be used to justify their position to bring more control over the world. Climate change will be a main driver of control in the new world being built. So you just can't ignore these events as just weather. Pay attention to what's going on. And depending on where you live, be ready for some kind of major disaster. The reason I say this is because of what is currently happening and has been happening it seems for a month now. Right now they're speaking about this heat wave. Tonight, the record heat wave growing more dangerous by the day. 13 states from coast to coast under brutal heat advisories. It's growing deadlier too. Steve Curry died this week after trekking through Death Valley in 121 degrees. His wife Rima still in shock. He thought he was prepared for it. In Miami, officials on edge as tens of thousands flock to this weekend's Rolling Loud Music Festival amid a 42-day streak of a 100-plus degree heat index. We just got in the gate, y'all. It was so hot. And in Phoenix, where it got above 110 for the third week in a row. Plus, this has a lot of ice in it. Water stations set up to combat dehydration. The misery now heading to the Midwest and the Plains. Dallas could hit 104. Also in the bullseye, Minneapolis expected to reach 99. And in Kansas City, Missouri, a steamy 97. As the South bakes, Let's go! torrential rain flooding Boston's Fenway Park last night, suspending their game against the Mets. Take a look at this. Stunned fans watch as water rushed down the ballpark staircase. And one week after floods rushed into a Philadelphia suburb, as this summer of severe weather continues to claim lives. Priscilla joins us from Houston. Priscilla, we're not just talking about more days of record heat, but rather weeks. Jose, that's right. Temperatures here in the south and across the southeast and west are forecast to remain well above average through August. Please don't ignore this. To me, this seems like this heat wave will be the scapegoat for something greater. Be prepared for a massive weather related event to occur over these next few months because you don't just go from massive heat to nothing. I would expect the heat to be a major scapegoat for a major hurricane or a problem with the power grid. Let's look at something else. Now, I have made different videos in regards to the fourth industrial revolution and I'm speaking about AI in particular. If you think these things are inconsequential and far off, you are not paying enough attention. We already see that Whole Foods is implementing the pay with your hand technology at all their stores. Soon you will be able to pay for groceries at every Whole Foods in the U.S. with just a swipe of your hand. Amazon says that the pay by palm technology will be at all of those stores nationwide by the end of the year. Customers just have to hover their hand over the device to pay. This method is already being used at 200 Whole Foods locations across 20 states. And you can also find it in other places, stores like Panera Bread. They are just doing this to soften up the public for the coming world ID that everyone seems to be completely unaware of. What happened this week should be more widely known, but for the most part, the masses, as usual, are being kept in the dark. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, co-founder of ChatGPT, launched his new project called WorldCoin just this week. As we see on their website, World ID, a more human internet with global proof of personhood, privacy first, self-custodial, decentralized, 
get your world ID. If you remember my video on Web3, this is speaking of Web3 completely, but let's not lose focus. Basically, what we are seeing is that the creators of artificial intelligence are solving a problem they created by making a world identification system to prove you are not artificial intelligence. Look at what they say on this site. World ID is a new privacy first decentralized identity protocol. It enables seamless sign in to websites, mobile apps, and crypto dApps while proving you're a unique and real person without sharing personal data like names, emails, etc. They literally want you to prove that you're a real human being. World ID supports multiple types of personhood verifications. At launch, this includes phone number verification for easy access to anyone with a smartphone and orb biometric verification for extreme accuracy. Now, would you be willing to provide a scan of your eye in order to get hold of a new cryptocurrency? That is what is required to authenticate your identity if you want to use WorldCoin, a new form of digital money that has just been launched. It's the brainchild of Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. The scanners look like this, and the company says they are necessary because AI is making it more difficult to distinguish humans from bots. Digital identity has been an open problem since the invention of the internet. Even today, more than 50% of the world's population doesn't have a verifiable legal ID. As we venture into the exciting new age of artificial intelligence, solving proof of personhood is more important than ever, specifically to ensure democratic access and governance of these systems, fairly distribute the benefits generated, and know who and what to trust online. WorldCoin aims to address this in a privacy-first, self-sovereign, and decentralized way. This is made possible through the World ID Open Protocol. If successful, it will become the largest network of authentic humans on the internet as a public good. One way to think about World ID is as a global digital passport that lives locally on its holder's phone. World ID's most important property is that the holder can use it to prove that they're a real unique person without sharing personal data using zero knowledge proofs. Yeah, do you see what is here now? What I'm trying to show you is that the world is coming together introducing the new technology for the coming new system. This is Web3, I spoke about this in depth already. They are putting everything for this new system in place. It's all here. They have been talking about digital IDs for a long time now. The World Economic Forum has been talking about this agenda for over four years. Why is the World Economic Forum uh, uh, bothering with digital identity? Why are we looking into it? Why is it such an important topic for us? Please. So um, over 60% of the G global GDP is expected to be digitized by 2022. Uh, more and more people, businesses, devices, and, and things are interacting online. And the topic here today, digital identity, sits at the heart um, of, those, of those interactions. It, uh, how we construct and use digital identities uh, would uh, determine mm -hmm. how people are represented online, what uh, opportunities they have access to, what or who is trusted uh, online. So it's quite a foundational role that identity plays in digital economies and societies, and so one needs to uh, shape it uh, thoughtfully. I've been explaining this agenda in multiple ways for some time. When discussing the metaverse, digital currencies, the fourth industrial revolution, Web3, artificial intelligence, this is all of it. I've spoken on this topic many different times in different ways. The new economy that comes after the collapse of the current world order will be a completely digital one where they are bringing us into the internet. That's what Web3 is. It's a completely digital economy that is run online. They want to bring the whole world into the system where everyone is monitored and tracked. And for those of us with the slightest bit of discernment, we can see how this will be moving to the market. I can't believe he just paid with his hand. Like you just literally put your hand up and you're good to go. Like that's crazy. The world digital ID is just a part of this agenda. And for people who like to call these things conspiracy theories, or these agendas are not for today, but for tomorrow, you have been proved completely wrong because they just rolled it out this week. And this is from a major company, OpenAI. In fact, 
you probably didn't know that they have already rolled this technology out in some test case countries just so they can get a feel of how it all will work. The small country of Estonia was one of the first countries to test this four years ago. We are in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. The Baltic country is home to 1.3 million people and to one of the most advanced digital societies in the world. From e-residency to online voting to national ID cards, we're here to see how Estonia can be a blueprint for other countries looking to go digital. And yeah, now after they have a good handle on it, they are allowing companies to come out and roll this out to get us conditioned for this when things really start to change. This rollout happened this week without a lot of fanfare because it's not time for the masses to be fully brought in. But understand, they want everyone in the world to have a world ID in order to transact on the internet. Everyone in the world will have a world identification number. That is their goal. You need to have faith and strength if you plan to bow out from the system when it fully comes online. If you remember when the solution was rolled out, it wasn't really an option for you to not participate if you wanted to be a part of society. Once the world system agreed, everyone followed. When this new system comes online, it will be even worse and it will come in phases. Understand, you just don't move from a collapse to mark of the beast. You are moved in phases that make the conditioning easier to accept. If you are watching this, what I'm trying to do for you is mentally prepare you now so when the time comes, you have already built up enough strength and faith in order to withdraw. These videos are not for everyone. My prayer and hope for you is that you will have enough conviction to not be moved by fear or peer pressure. This is the difference in being reactive and proactive. I'm showing you that this stuff is here. And if you are preparing for Yah's kingdom, you must know that they are leading the world to a point where we will not be able to follow if we want to be preserved unto Yah. Now, the last thing I'm going to discuss and bring out is probably the most important because I personally feel that this is what will be the major start to the Great Reset. It is important to not ignore what is going on with China and Taiwan and Russia and Ukraine. Because one of these conflicts will be the real geopolitical event that will reshape the world. Also, North Korea still is in the mix somewhere with all this. Overseas, there are new tensions between North Korea and the U.S. The North launched two more missiles yesterday, just hours after another U.S. nuclear-powered submarine arrived in South Korea. This comes a week after U.S. Army Private Travis King ran across the border into North Korea. Tra uh, Nancy Cordes joins us now from the White House with more. Nancy, good morning. Good morning, Dana. U.S. officials tell us they've been met with radio silence from North Korea about this U.S. soldier in their custody. In fact, the only message yesterday, they say, was a defiant one, and it came in the form of missile tests as the U.S. beefs up its own presence in the region. The USS Annapolis is the second U.S. nuclear-powered submarine in a week to arrive in South Korea, a show of force by the two allies. Within hours, North Korea made its own statement, firing a pair of short-range ballistic missiles into the sea again. These launches are in violation of multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions. U.S. officials conceded Monday they have yet to establish any meaningful contact with North Korea over Army Private Travis King, the 23-year-old who made a dash across the border into the Hermit Kingdom a week ago today. We wanted information about his safety, um, but we have not received any response from them at all. UN officials in the region, who typically manage negotiations between North and South, say they too have heard next to nothing. None of us know where this is going to end, so uh, I'm in life an optimist. I remain optimistic. Private King allegedly damaged a police car in South Korea and was being sent back to the U.S. He was escorted to the airport in Seoul, but then slipped away and somehow managed to join a tour group headed to the DMZ. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has met Russia's defense minister and a high-ranking Chinese delegation in Pyongyang. They're Kim's first known prominent foreign visitors since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic three years ago. Korea's defense minister says Russia and Pyongyang are united in countering what they called gangster-like U.S. hegemony. In regards to Russia and Ukraine, the attacks keep growing. It seems that at some point, nuclear weapons will be used by Russia. That is the narrative being presented. The Ukraine war going nuclear. Now, this is not an idle threat 
or bravado by a maverick commander. This actually was a threat that's been made by Vladimir Putin himself. On Tuesday, he issued a clear and unambiguous ultimatum that Russia would use depleted uranium weapons on the battlefield. Why? To avenge the death of one of his top generals. Depleted uranium is a dense byproduct that is left over when uranium is enriched for use in nuclear reactors or nuclear weapons. In fact, it retains some radioactive properties. It can also be used for tank, armor and bullets due to its high intensity, through which it can penetrate enemy armored vehicles. In other words, depleted uranium is mildly radioactive but the radiation could spread terror and once it lands on the battlefield, it will invite escalation. Don't ignore the narrative about what's going on there just because it's not heavy in the news cycle right now. Be prepared for the unexpected with that and it's probably going to be nuclear. But China is the real geopolitical situation. Tensions continue to grow and being that Henry Kissinger was just there in China, we know that there will be more to this story. Nikki Haley says, that China is the biggest threat we have had since Pearl Harbor. This is the biggest threat we've had since Pearl Harbor. Yeah, and maybe when people hear that, they just listen and agree. But if you hear what she said, she alluded to the future. And understand, go back. Pearl Harbor wasn't the threat. The Japanese were the threat. They sneak attacked Pearl Harbor. So her statement makes no sense unless she is alluding to how things will get started a sneak attack, a surprise attack. So for me, in understanding the world, I do not just listen to the news, but I review what the thought leaders and major organizations that influence this world and its leaders, I listen and review what they say. The thoughts from the mainstream do not particularly matter because they want us to just be reactives, never actually proactive. So when you listen to those who are in the role of influence that the mainstream media does not promote to us, then it can help us understand what's really at play. Because if they wanted us to believe these things that these people are saying, they would just broadcast and highlight these reports. The CFR, which is the Council on Foreign Relations, this year wrote a report about the United States and Taiwan. There was a lot said in the report, so I suggest anyone that wants to understand more comprehensively should just read the report. I will read some of the conclusion. The United States has vital strategic interests at stake in the Taiwan Strait. Protecting those interests requires that the United States deter a conflict over Taiwan and maintain the capacity to come to Taiwan's defense at a reasonable cost. Given shifts in the military balance of power and China's growing assertiveness throughout the Indo-Pacific, however, deterrence is dangerously eroding and the United States and China are drifting towards war. At the same time, a conflict over Taiwan is not inevitable. To avoid a conflict that would likely devastate Taiwan, China, and the United States, as well as trigger a deep global depression, the United States should take prudent but firm steps to reestablish a position of strength. So like the CFR said, the United States and China are drifting toward a war. And this is directly in our faces, but because we're so distracted, most of us are not able to see what is clearly right in our face but they are alluding to it, so I am making sure that I am aware of it. So as I said, I believe that this part of the agenda will be the main catalyst for the Great Reset. And let me explain why I said that. We all must live in a biblical mindset and have biblical expectations when we are dealing with all of this. One thing that we do is that we tend to give the devil more credit than he deserves. I do not believe that we're just waiting on the enemy to move. I don't think that we're just waiting for the enemy to make their move because at this time they're just still not ready to proceed yet. I do not think that is the case. We are not waiting on the enemy to move. We are waiting on Yah to move. We are waiting for the seals to be open. And at this point, I praise Yah that he has not done so yet because so many of us will still not be ready. So I praise Yah for his patience for us. But for those of us who are ready and our faith and trust are in Yah, it is important to live in a biblical reality and not one based on all these secular agendas. These secular agendas are just what the narratives will be about when Yah has started the countdown to his kingdom. Do not put your whole life on what they're saying in the secular. So let's make sure we have an understanding. Because I believe the first seal has already been opened, I am currently waiting for the second seal to open. 
And when this seal is opened, this is the time when I expect to see war really occur and the times of change really move on the earth. Revelation chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 says, When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, ran out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. When peace is taken from the earth and people will kill one another, this is what I'm expecting first. So we're talking about world war as well as civil war. Peace taken away from the earth. All these events that we are talking about now are just the secular side to understanding what will be occurring because of the spiritual side. I hope you understood that. So again, I'm expecting war to happen first. After that, we will see the third seal be opened. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. As Revelation chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. This is scarcity on the earth, and it's hyperinflation. We see the price of wheat being worth a denarius, which, if you understand the Roman currency at that time, when speaking of a denarius during the times of the Roman Empire, a denarius was worth one day of wages. So it's like saying a loaf of bread costs like $50. It's hyperinflation. I'm watching according to what Yah prophesies. And as I'm preparing for these events and what they will mean for myself and my family, as we continue to grow in Yah, we must allow him to guide us through. And this requires faith and trust in him. The world is not ready. Yes, but you must be ready. We need our faith and trust in him to be resolute. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to Elohim must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I think Jeremiah actually sums it up the best. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahuwah, and whose hope is Yahuwah. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when the heat comes. But his leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. You see, the difference between the kingdom minded believer and the rest of the world is their faith and trust in Yah. The rest of the world is looking for the world to fix the problems. The same leaders who created the problems, the masses are hoping that these same people will fix the problems too. They trust the world. While kingdom-minded believers, they don't want the world to solve anything for them. They rest and trust in Yahuwah. Their hope is in Yahuwah and his promises. And because of this, they will not be anxious in the year of drought. They will not fear when the heat comes. And they will not stop yielding the fruit of a believer just because adversity has come to them. Because they have determined within themselves that they must persevere. And this is what we all must do today with ourselves and our faith. We need to build our faith and trust up in Yah so that we are ready and able to overcome. I did not make this video to put fear in any of you, but so that you can mentally prepare yourself for what is coming. The world wants us to be so distracted and ready to react and follow whatever they say. But if you're awake and made aware, you can now be proactive and have a plan of action. You will have proper mental thought about what you will do and what you will have to do when certain things come in front of you and you have to decide. I want you to think about it. Professionals in anything, they just don't show up at the game time and assume that they're going to be ready. They practice and repeat the same behavior that will bring them success. Our faith can be thought of in the same way. The more you build up your faith and dependency on Yah now, learning how to yield to his voice, knowing how to trust him when he's moving, knowing and being assured that he is always there, depending on the person, this can take some time to build up. And so this is the time where we must be doing this. If you want to be ready for Yah's kingdom, you must be building up and drawing strength in your faith. So let's understand. I first have taken you in reality so that you're not ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. You have been made aware so that you can be mentally prepared and not caught off guard like most people will. Now that you understand the reality of the times that you're in, you now must continue on in the training up of your faith and trust in Yah so that you will be ready. 
And that is what last week's teaching was about, among the other videos. You have now been brought into reality about the time we are entering as we move into August. Expect things to pick up as the Republican debate in late August gets closer. Don't be led down their paths and talking points. Stay awake and aware, but not steered by their agendas and narratives. Everything we are seeing is all about moving the world into a new one. If you have said with your mouth and declare with your heart that you will be a part of our Father's kingdom, then you yourself must prepare to reject this world. You must build up your strength and your faith in Yah and be ready for the kingdom of Yah because it's truly at hand. Be ready and be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share this video with others. If you have not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Yah willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing, and I'm very thankful for you. You really have no idea how you have helped this ministry. Thank you sincerely. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. I love you all.